All right, guys, Southern Buttermilk Biscuits. Really, our family just calls it biscuits. Matter of fact, I don't even know another way to call it besides just biscuits. Biscuits and gravy, sausage and biscuits, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, but this is how we make our biscuits. All right, guys, here we go. Southern buttermilk biscuits, or the Williams way. Matter of fact, the Charcoal King way. First one to do is wet. We're gonna take one egg, and the reason why I add an egg to a standard buttermilk uh, biscuit recipe, because I like to chew. I like to be able to uh, take the biscuit and like tear it apart. I feel like a lot of times some of the original biscuits that I've been getting have been uh, more crumbly, and this just adds a little bit of texture, adds a little bit more air pockets. Also a secret, don't tell anybody. All right, about three quarters of milk. My wife loves 1% milk and I can't stand it. So we're gonna go about, let's see, let's do, uh, let's do half a cup of half and half. And we'll do a quarter cup of this white water. I call it white water. Feels like white water. I don't even know why we can't get 2% milk. 1% more. All right. I'm just gonna use my spatula and beat up the egg a little bit. To make the buttermilk, since I don't have buttermilk, I'm gonna use one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. No, you're not gonna be able to taste it, but it is good. This is what really allows the uh, the aeration, the uh, the layers. Besides the butter, this really helps it create volume to get a like a flaky, nice soft biscuit. I don't know if you guys can smell this, but in the background, I've already got my sausage going. Half my family likes just regular sausage and biscuits, and I love sausage and gravy. So anytime I get my favorite sausage, I take half of it. Cut it up for the girls and the other half, mm, it's about to go down today. i can tell you that right now. I'm gonna craving this. All right, for the dry ingredients. Two cups. I use all purpose flour. You can use self rising, I use it all. I wouldn't say it has to be 100% exact, but you gotta at least get it in the ballpark, especially with bacon. All right, two cups of flour. We're going to do, let's see, a tablespoon of baking powder, and we're gonna do a teaspoon of salt. Let's see, a teaspoon of salt. One tablespoon of sugar. Once again, this isn't traditional. Doesn't make it too sweet. Gives a little something, something. Sugar to me is like magic. That's what we used to say in the Navy. Anytime you add the sugar, it's like adding magic because it just mm, ups it up a little bit. All right. And my baking powder. One tablespoon of that. Sift our ingredients together. Make sure there's no clumps. Aerate a little bit. Make it a little lighter. Get the salt through there. You really don't have to do this, but I did. I said, heck, what the heck. Why not? Give them something a little different. All right, let me flip my sausage and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. Here's a tip. Last night I knew I was gonna be making my biscuits. So I took out some shortening, two tablespoons a piece, so that's six tablespoons, and a half a stick of butter and I froze it. Instead of taking your, uh, dough, 
cutter like this, your butter cutter, that's what I call it, butter cutter, and cutting it up, I've almost eliminated this tool completely. Just take a cheese grater and just grate your cold butter or your frozen butter, it's better frozen, right into your biscuit mix. Of course, you want to be careful once you get down to the end. You want butter, not skin. All right. Okay. Here's two tablespoons. We're just going to break it up in little bitty pieces. I just use a flour to separate the little bits, and I just pinch it off like pea-sized pieces. Sometimes people just put it in there and cut it up themselves. It's like a recipe. Ten thousand different ways to make a scrambled egg, and it's one ingredient. But I'm telling you, when you grate that butter, that's where it creates that flaky uh, layers that you're looking for in a biscuit. All right, there we go. Lightly mix. You definitely don't want to over mix biscuits. That's how you get that tough part. No bueno. You just want it to come together You guys can already see the layers forming. Doesn't take much. We're gonna throw a little flour down. I need to grab my flour. My trusty side assistant's gonna grab my flour for me. Go, go gadget arms over there. All right, we're just gonna throw a little bench flour down for a working surface, not much. Hey, I know you guys got mason jars laying around at the house. Some of them aren't being used. I just use a lid for my uh, for my biscuit cutter. Been using it for years. Mmm, man, this stuff's soft. All right, we're just gonna form it a little bit. You don't want to add too much flour. Now we've got a trick. Learn this from the old school people, like my grandmother. Don't overwork your flour. I can hear it today. All right, pat it out, roll it out. Man, you guys can feel that butter. Can we get a close in? Can we get a zoom in? Look at that butter. Look at all that shortening of butter and layers. You see all those little pockets? That's going to, when it cooks, it's going to create the steam, which allows your biscuit to be flaky and good. Mm. All right. I've melted just a little bit of butter and I've let it cool down a little bit. This is the trick. Let it cool down just a little bit. You don't want it piping hot. And now what we're gonna do is just butter our biscuits. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna create a layer. So when we bake it, it's a lot easier to pull apart. All right, we're just gonna cut it in half. That's why we put the butter on there first. Cut it in half. Lay it on top of each other. Now you guys are starting to understand. Now you see it. Flatten it back out. All right, a little more flour for our mason jar lid. We're gonna flour it really good so it don't stick. All right guys, with some of that butter that we still got melted, I'm just gonna put a thin coating on the bottom of my cast iron skillet. And we're gonna save the rest of it for the top. Just a thin coating. Like I said, I've got our floured. I don't know, I roll it out to about a, I don't know, what's that, about half an inch to three quarter of an inch. You didn't roll it. Patted it out, rolled it out. These things don't have to be perfect. I don't know if I've ever made a 
perfectly round biscuit my whole life. Shove one up close, up to the camera. And if anything, it's more uniformity. And what you don't want to do is sit there and just keep rubbing the dough. Because every time your hands hit the dough, it warms up that butter. And that's not what we want. And the last one, you guys see this, how much of a mess it is? We're not going to sit there and re-roll it. We're not going to pat it back out. Try not to get as much flour in there. This is how you get, they're called seconds. We don't want that. We want to try to make firsts. It's when they sit there and cut all their biscuits out. Then they've got all this extra dough. Then they take the dough. Then they incorporate it back in. Then they roll it back out. Well, then all that second dough has incorporated all that bench flour. It has been worked twice. They're never as good as the first batch. Plus, if that doesn't look like a biscuit and gravy biscuit, I don't know what does. That's why I don't mind it right there. You guys see that? All right. Right there in the middle. Now, we preheat our oven to 400 degrees. We're going to put them in there for about, mm, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. And we're going to show you what they look like when they come out. As soon as they come out with the rest of that butter, we're going to hit the tops with the, uh, with the melted butter. That way when they're hot, all that butter just soaks into them, uh, the, uh, the biscuits. Mm, I can just taste it right now. See you guys. All right guys, our oven's preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna take our Lodge cast iron black lock skillet right on up here let's go low we'll go low set our timer for 10 minutes and we'll check on it all right guys we're just grinding up the sausage right here now this is my old faithful wooden spoon i would probably say this is probably it, literally the most important item i think when seasoning a cast iron skillet once they're well seasoned i think you get away with a lot more but we're, when you're introducing a brand new skillet i don't think there's anything more important yes why'd you ask this is my theory, and only my theory. When they pre-season a cast iron skillet, it's not necessarily smooth. Ooh, biscuits. All right, guys, let's check on these biscuits. I'll come back with that. Let's see. All right, you ready? Let's check on them. All right, guys, this is a 10 minutes mark. Good Lord of mercy, look how big them things got. Now, that's what we're talking about right there. All right, let's try another five minutes. All right, back to what I was saying, the wooden spoon. So this is my theory. The preseason cast iron skillets are bumpy. We all know that. Unless you get a really expensive one, I'm not in the market for one. I just stick with Lodge. What happens is, the more you season it, the oil builds up. My firm belief is, the more you use a wooden spoon when you first start seasoning it, the more you're grinding it down. So it's a faster meat in the middle to get a smooth surface. My opinion. But I use this bad boy like crazy. All right, back to the gravy. Because you can't have biscuits without sausage gravy. Pick out your favorite sausage. Any rule in gravy making, you see all that fat in there? That's what you want to keep, all right? It's supposed to be equal parts fat and, and uh, flour. So what I've done, I've already cooked off my daughter's sausage for her biscuits, and I kept the grease in there. I just added the other half of sausage. Come over here to the flour. We're gonna eyeball it. Show you guys what a paste. It's not supposed to be like super glumpy, super dry. And I don't need to make a five gallon bucket of this. It's only for me. As you guys can see by my waistline, the last thing I need is 15 quarts of sausage gravy. Add a little bit more. As I'm saying, I don't need a lot. <laughs> I've got it on about, about, ah, about a medium low heat. I don't want this super hot. That's as much flour as I want, but you guys can see how loose it is. So lucky for me, I get to make more gravy because that's not the consistency we want. Let's try that. There we go. You guys see how it's barely clumping together, but it still has room to fry? 
still has room to separate. That's what you want. When it's all stuck up and glumpy and like that, I'm not a big fan of that. I think that it's easier to get lumps that way. All right, we're just gonna let that sit and go for a minute. And what that do, what that does is it helps cook out the uh, the flour. And the more you cook this, in this stage right here only, the less potent the flour is. That's why on roux for gumbos and stuff, they cook it for so long and they have less powering effect, or thickening effect, I should say, it's the less power the flour has. But we don't wanna go too long. All right, you guys ready? My number one key when making gravy is you gotta make sure your fat and flour, your roux mix, as close as you can to temperature as what you're adding. If you wanna add cold versus cold, add cold versus cold. But if I took this cold milk right here and, and, and my temperature was like a normal medium and I added this in here, it's gonna start bubbling and steaming right away. And that's when it's hard to get it really stirred really quick and that's how you get your lumps. All I do, I keep the temperature on and I just take it off the heat. That's all I do, take it off the heat most people don't heat up their milk in a sauce pot on their stove. So I'm just going to take it off the heat. It's the quickest way to cool down a cast iron pan is just take it off the heat. I'm going to put this 1% milk in there. I call it white water. I might have said that earlier. And I'm just eyeballing it. I've got some half and half earlier when we're making our biscuits. I'm going to add that as a finishing touch to add just a little bit of creaminess. We're gonna move it back over. You guys see that, how that flour just incorporated into the milk? Because it wasn't super hot. And although my milk has been sitting out for, what do you think, about an hour? I think it's been sitting out for about an hour. It didn't steam, it didn't boil, it didn't thicken like crazy, then you gotta stir it out. I'm not worried about stirring the lumps out. Look, you guys see that? The only lumps I see right now is good old sausage bits. And I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit to about a medium, because if not, we'll be here all day. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you what thickness I like my gravy at. All right, my five minute timer just went off. Ooh, there we go. That's it right there. And you guys have smell-o-vision? God, between that sausage gravy, look at them biscuits. Oh yeah, that crickly, oh good, good Lord of mercy. All right, you guys remember that butter from earlier? As soon as it comes out, I mean, as soon as it comes out. Mm. Look at that glisten top with that butter top. My butter got a little cold on me, but that's actually probably pretty good because it warms up when the silicone brush goes on top of it and it's not as likely to run down the edges as much and then you put it back in the butter and that's what we're looking for right there that thick glaze of butter mm. all right let's hit them on that gravy look now your gravy is never going to come up to its strongest thickening power until it becomes a boil until it comes up to a boil that's what i'm trying to say so that's a little hot for me we're going to turn it back down it's a little thick for me right now, I can already tell. So I'll add a little bit more milk. Not the cream yet, not the cream. We're gonna add the cream right at the end. And I haven't tasted it because as long as you're adding something to it, you don't know how strong the salt and the pepper needs to be to finish your gravy. So as soon as it's done and we think it's right at the point where we want it, then that's where I wanna taste it for salt and pepper. Oh, that's looking good. That's that's pretty close. That's pretty close. All right. Add just a little bit of half and half for some creaminess. Turn our oven off. 
don't know if you guys could hear this. My daughter just yelled at me and said, Daddy, I want a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit, not just a sausage biscuit. So I guess I'm about to put some eggs on the stove for my daughter. I feel like a Waffle House cook. Cook a little this, cook a little that. Family of four, and I got 15 pans dirty. All right, that's, that's good right there. That's good. All right, let's taste it. Definitely need some salt. You guys like my command center over here? I got my rendered bacon fat. I got my Crisco, so when I season my pans, olive oil, my little paper towels, that way I just rub that Crisco in them hot uh, cast iron pans and season those. Always got a stick of butter out. You can never have too much. Butter, 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 that's right. One of my all-time favorite seasonings, not endorsed, should be. This stuff is awesome. I use it on steaks, uh, seafood, chicken, pork. I use it on everything. I always got a little garlic. My little command center, as I call it. All right. Back to what we came here for, some good old sausage gravy. Some black pepper. You can add as much or as little as you like. It's all the personal preference. I like my little peppery. I don't have to lie. I know it's coming up to a, a boil. I'm just gonna turn the heat off because I don't want it to overcook. I'm gonna check it for saltiness again. Golly, guys, you, you see how creamy that is? I never once worried about lumps. I never once got a whisk out and stirred it to death and never steamed my face. Mm, 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 mm. I'll probably regret this bite. Mm. Ah, well, you can't beat that. Mm. I've been looking forward to that for a long time. With an over easy egg. Ah! All right. You guys remember that biscuit that was right in the middle? It didn't look too good. Watch this. Mm. Let's see how easy that came out of the cast iron skillet. Look at that. No stick. That's how a non stick. That's how a cast iron skillet is supposed to be. This bad boy is only two months old. Ooh, that thing hot from the oven. Two months old, and look at it. Mm. Now let's break this thing apart to see what you guys think. You guys ready? Look how it tears apart. You guys see the difference how it's, I mean, yes, it's crumbling, but look how much it's just tearing apart versus just crumbling apart. That steam, and that's what you want. That's why we grated that butter to make these biscuits for those air pockets. That's why we added the... Uh, the apple cider vinegar, which reacts with a baking powder. Mmm. All right, enough of that stuff. Come on, with daddy. Woo! Well, I'm telling you what, if you guys can smell this, only because I got a fork, a uh, spoon on hand. Oh, this bad boy cool. I'm more. Mmm. Yo, I can't dance. But after eating this, I might learn how to. Golly. I might give them a two-leg hook and caboodle or something. I don't know. God, this is good. Mmm. Look at it. Look at that golden crust on bottom because we added that little bit of butter on the bottom. You guys see that? You guys hear it? Mmm. Golly. Are we still filming? I hope not. God, how do you not like that? Mmm. Yes, I'm making your eggs. No, I'm not. I can't stop eating it. Last one. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's worth the wait all week long. Mm. Golly, that was good. Hey guys, 
If you like anything, I, a matter of fact, let's do this. Comment below right now and tell me what your favorite way to eat a homemade biscuit is. Molasses and butter, jelly, ooh, fried deer, ooh, fried deer biscuit. Now that's what I'm talking about. Pork chop biscuit, comment below right now. And thanks for watching. See you next time.